are gathered in a festive setting to celebrate the career accomplishments and induct into the Naval Postgraduate School Hall of Fame one of our most distinguished alumni, Admiral Cecil Haney. The NPS Hall of Fame was established in 2001 to honor exceptional members of the NPS community for their leadership and commitment to public service. The Naval Postgraduate School has had the privilege of inducting many exceptional individuals over the years. Stellar leaders who once walked the halls of NPS as students and now serve as mentors and leaders to many. Some examples of the luminaries include Admiral Mike Mullen, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Michael Hayden, former Marine Corps Commandant, Vice Admiral Jan Todd, who commanded 10th Fleet, is the first woman to be a numbered fleet commander, the Honorable Everett Alvarez, a Navy vet Vietnam prisoner of war for eight years, and who remained in public service, rising to Deputy Director of the Peace Corps and the Veterans Administration. And our most recent inductee, the Honorable Robert Work, who was the Deputy Secretary of Defense and Under Secretary of the Navy. As I look at the Hall of Fame members on the wall behind me, what strikes me is that though varied in their careers and accomplishments, the one thing that each of them has in common is an unwavering, selfless dedication to service to their country, to their communities, and to the Naval Postgraduate School. Admiral Haney, I speak for all of the Naval Postgraduate School and the Department of the Navy when I say how pleased we are to have you here with us today, sir, and thank you for your many years of dedicated service to our great nation. At this time, I would like to ask the president of the Naval Postgraduate School, Vice Admiral Ann Rondeau, to come forward and offer her remarks on the significance of today and the remarkable career of our newest inductee. So we have the, the occasion to look at the bio, 
but to consider the man, and the man is an exemplar of what we value in the Navy. So I want to, to, to just take a moment to, to truly soak in what we have before us. Alumni, leaders, and extraordinary leaders who made our Navy better, greater, just that much more modern and, and more effective through who they are as, as leaders. It is, with, it is with pleasure that I now have the privilege of introducing the Secretary of the Navy to, to further make comments. It is he who has brought us here in many ways. It is he who has said to us, I had an education here. We have alumni here who have done wonderful things and I want to be part of you. So this is a man who, who also has, has given us a tone and a purpose for thinking about who we are for the future. So Mr. 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 Uh, Secretary, on behalf of the entire uh, Naval Post graduate community, thank you for being here, but now it's about Admiral Haney. So sir, over to you, sir. Thank you, Madam President, and I promise to be brief this evening, but it's wonderful to be home again. And I really do say home. I spent three years here at this great institution from 86 to 89 with my family. My second son was born here at Monterey uh, Community Hospital. And of course, we have the fondest memories of walking these, uh, these halls here in this wonderful Del Monte Hotel. Uh, but today, we really are here to celebrate these two amazing individuals, and particularly you, Admiral Haney. Congratulations to you, Admiral Moore, as well, too. And you have served as a mentor to me for many, many years, and I'm so pleased to be with you today. And Admiral uh, Haney, the last time we were together, actually, I was at your change of command, where you were assuming command of St. Pat Fleet with Admiral Pavel, from Admiral Pavel Walsh. And of course, the leadership that you've been demonstrated there and at Stratcom and throughout your entire career is really, really special. You know, as I reflect on these marvelous pictures and names on the wall, you know, I think about what ties them all together, and it's really two things in my own mind. The first is a tremendous dedication to not just our Navy, but our Department of the Navy. Um, the commitment that they've made through their long careers, either as civilians or as, as military officers in service to our country. And the second thing that comes to mind is how much they all care about the people and really making a difference in people's lives. And Admiral Haney, I don't think there's anyone more representative of someone who cares about their troops about the people that they lead than you. And so I'm deeply honored to be here, and thank you for inviting me, um, Admiral, Madam President. And uh, let me just say one last thing. When I last spoke to the student body here, I made a commitment that I would be committed to this fine institution, and I am keeping that commitment uh, through major investments in fiscal year 22, 23, and 24, and 25 to come. And uh, this school is going to be at the heart of our Naval transformation, you might say, with the establishment of our Naval Innovation Center here at Navy Postgraduate School. And so I thank each and every one of you who I know will contribute to that effort in a really uh, special way. Thank you. Mr. Secretary, thank you very much. Admiral Haney, would you please come forward for induction into the NPS Hall of Fame? I now invite Vice Admiral Phil Sawyer, the Naval Postgraduate School Undersea Warfare Chair, to preside over the reading and presentation of the award citation. Joining him are Lieutenant Dyson Romine, the President of the Monterey Chapter of the National Naval Officers Association, and Ensign Jennifer Wynn, hand selected from the United States Naval Academy as a Bowman Scholar and a representative of the next generation of the U.S. Yeah, thanks, uh, Kaz. So before we read the citation, I think you're going to find that the citation honoring Admiral Haney, it's dense. There's a lot in there. But as both President Rondeau and the second half said, it doesn't, it's hard to capture the metal of the person, the impact of the person in a citation that is trying to cover five decades of service, almost 40 years. Matter of fact, it's impossible. So the advantage that I have 
is that Admiral Heaney's and my career kind of uh, coincided, crossed paths several times. So when we talk about him being the commander of STRATCOM, I was one of his task force that worked for him as a guy in charge of the submarines in the Pacific. When he was commander of the Pacific Fleet, I was a task force out in Japan that worked for him. When he was in charge of submarine resourcing in 87, I was the chief of staff at Sub 4, and I swear I worked for him then. <laughs> and, and he was my Commodore when I was in 05 command. And so I always said, when we get a new submariner crew or officer that reports to a submarine, they may not remember 10 years from then who the President of the United States is, but they know who their CO and their Chief of the Boat is. That's how much impact you have at that level. And trust me, the person that impacts that commanding officer the most is the Commodore. And I was fortunate to have Commodore Haney as my Commodore during 05 Command. And we had a, good, a pretty good group. One of his deputies was a guy named John Richardson. You may remember him as a CNO. Um, and so we, it, I, will, I don't want to say we made it easy for him, but <laughs> he made it easy for us. He made it easy for us at the level that really is important, the tactical unit, the summary that goes to sea and does what our Navy needs to do, to do that, that executes the orders that come from, from above. And so as we read the citation, remember, I'm one person, there are thousands of those like me that Admiral Haney has had the chance to impact and imprint through his mentorship, his leadership, and his confidence. So with that, I turn it over to Ensign Wynn. Would our guests please rise? Attention to award. Admiral Haney graduated from the United States Naval Academy in 17, or, sorry, 19, <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> 1978, receiving a bachelor degree of science in ocean engineering and commissioning to the United States Navy. Admiral Haney was selected into the U.S. Submarine Force, where he served aboard the USS John C. Calhoun, the USS Frank Cable, the USS Hyman G. Rickover, the USS Asheville, and commanded the USS Honolulu. Additionally, he was Assistant Squadron Deputy of Submarine Squadron 8, Commander, Submarine Squadron 1, where he selected for flag rank, Commander, Submarine Group 2, and Director, Submarine Warfare Division. Admiral Haney held many billets during his shore duty tours, including Administrative Assistant for Enlisted Affairs at Naval Reactors, Congressional Appropriations Liaison Officer for the Office of the Secretary of Defense, the Director of Naval Warfare Information Integration Group, and he also earned his master's degrees in engineering acoustics and systems technology from the Naval Postgraduate School, and a master's degree in national security strategy from the National Defense University. As a flag officer, he served as a deputy chief of staff with plans, policies, and requirements, U.S. Pacific Fleet, where he conducted political and military planning and operations with the Pacific Fleet and its infrastructures. He has also served as the Deputy Commander, U.S. Strategic Command. From 2012 to 2013, Admiral Haney was Commander, U.S. Pacific Fleet, commanding the world's largest fleet command, consisting of 100 million square acres, 200 ships and submarines, 1,200 aircraft, and 130,000 sailors and civilians. While at CPF, Admiral Haney was selected to be Commander of U.S. STRATCOM, where he served until retirement where he was responsible for strategic capabilities involving nuclear weapons, missile defense, space, and cyberspace. Over his 30 plus years of service, Admiral Haney received the Navy Distinguished Service Medal, the Defense Superior Service Medal, Legion of Merit, Navy Commendation Medal, and Navy Achievement Medal, along with other campaign and unit awards. He received the Vice Admiral James Bond Stockdale Award for inspirational leadership in 1998 for the Pacific Fleet. After retiring from the Navy, Admiral Haney remains active in the welfare and advancement of our nation's military, its members, and its families. He currently serves on the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Board of Managers, the Aerospace Corporation Board of Trustees, and the Board of Directors for General Dynamics Corporation, 
Tenant Healthcare, Systems Planning and Analysis Incorporated, and the Center of New American Security. He also serves on the Penn State University Applied Research Lab Advisory Board. From 2017 to 2018, he provided his expertise and knowledge in his role of co-chair for the China-US Dialogue on Strategic Nuclear Dynamics, leading the US delegation during informal dialogue aimed at improving mutual understanding on nuclear weapon-related issues held in both China and the US. Since July 2020, Admiral Haney has been the chairman of the board of directors for the Military Child Education Coalition, a global nonprofit organization focused, at, focused on advocating for quality educational opportunities for military and veteran-connected children affected by mobility, transition, deployment, and family separations. He does this while remaining active in his church, Hillendale Baptist Church, as a member of the choir teaching Bible study and as a chairman of its board of trustees. As a former commander of U.S. Strategic Command and U.S. Pacific Fleet, Admiral Cecil D. Haney retired, devoted his career to the advancement of the United States Navy as a global superpower in adapting to dynamic and adversarial threats. His work has brought great credit upon himself and the Naval Postgraduate School, warranting induction into the MPS Hall of Fame. Admiral Haney is an MPS alumnus who has dedicated his professional life to the defense of the United States of America, both as a military leader and a leader in the private sector. Congratulations, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it provides me great pleasure to introduce our 26th Naval Postgraduate School Hall of Fame inductee, Admiral Cecil Haney, for a few words. Sir, the floor is yours. My growth as a naval officer, as a person, and as a lifetime learner. It's wonderful to be back here on campus. Thank you, Secretary Dutoro, for being here and those kind remarks. Uh, can't thank you enough for your leadership and your role as Secretary of the Navy at large. Uh, but just thank you for being here in honor. Uh, great seeing you again uh, and, and all that you can. President Admiral Anne Rondeau for your leadership here and for your mentorship uh, as well. You see, you don't always know when you're being mentored, but I just recall you as the director of Navy's, uh, as the director of the Navy uh, there at Off Staff, 
when I was a baby one star, coming to the Pentagon at a time frame to beg for money. Uh, I was working for the Pacific Fleet at the NA at the time frame, and we were trying to get funds in order to support the deployment of the hospital ship Mercy to do some humanitarian assistance work here in the Pacific. And some in the OPNAV staff uh, were not supportive of that endeavor. Well, just seeing her leadership then and on other various occasions provided me an outstanding example to follow. So I can't thank you enough. And, uh, and of course, Hall of Fame uh, celebrity, <laughs> I said, well, uh, Edward Moore, uh, so proud of you, sir. And thank you for being here. And your stellar example of selfless service to our nation for so many years in so many different capacities. You know, we had a wonderful dinner last night with your wife, uh, Debbie, and we've just, just been honored to be able to hang out and, and, and share stories about life in general. So uh, that was also just a meaningful part of this visit here. And boy, uh, the young instant here, Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer Wynn. I apologize. Wow, you are <laughs> just stellar. You know, this young lady graduated from the Naval Academy, now studying uh, mechanical engineering here, or condensed one year, master's degree program, and, and I can just see a bright future for you, Jennifer. Uh, so proud of you. And Phil, what great words. Uh, you know, he's just always been a pleasure to work with throughout my career, and uh, just an honor to be able to, to receive this in your presence and all the things I know you are doing here at this institution. Uh, thank you for all that you do. Well, I'm frankly amazed to be here today receiving this recognition. For me, just getting the rich education here at Naval Postgraduate School is more than enough that education has served me well. I have, and I continue to talk positively about my time here in the 80s in so many forms, while mentoring others, and to so many leaders in our military. These discussions were not just about the quality of the graduate education here, but about the rich experience here then, and that continues to be just outstanding based on the feedback I received from recent graduates, as well as from the students here. So much so that other nations send their military officers here, as well as the other US military services. We can bring our special operational and even classified problems here and do research here on them while earning a degree. I so benefited also this institution while I was commanding the Pacific Fleet and U.S. Strategic Command as well, as well as other assignments because we could send our problems here and they would result in meaningful operational research projects and, and then we would get the results of those back in a sort of added workforce to those commands. Can't thank this institution enough for that. And even in retirement in my work, your reputation is talked about in various places as they uh, are interested or work in partnerships with you in various research done here. So I have and I continue to benefit immensely uh, from this institution even though I graduated from here so long ago. Now I have to admit I'm amazed to be here as I look at all those who have received this recognition before me, especially those I know. You know, uh, you see, I, I always considered myself, and still do consider myself, a slow learner. You know, as a child coming up from very austere and humble beginnings in elementary school, I struggled with reading. Today, we would call it a reading or a learning disorder. Well, my dad saw that, and he would have me uh, read the Washington Post to him frequently, focused on a particular section called the crime and justice section. 
So not only did I improve my reading abilities, but uh, we could have frank discussions about the consequences of bad behavior. <laughs> so he got a twofer out of that. See, Dad worked uh, two jobs and driving a taxi cab and also starting off as a janitor and then a ticket salesman for the Greyhound bus terminal. And my mom and child care and then the seamstress, they truly appreciated the value of education even though they didn't get that opportunity themselves to go to college, they pushed me and my two sisters to get college level education while knowing they didn't have the resources to pay for it. Yeah. What a blessing as we all got through college with my sister Yvonne even receiving her PhD. My parents also created a culture that exists this day for us as mom would frequently say, do all you can while you can. Now, I know receiving this uh, award, I will say, is about divine intervention because there are no such things as consequences. So all glory and honor goes to my Lord and Savior, blessing me with a wonderful set of parents and siblings, blessing me with an opportunity to not only join the Navy and get a commission, but to have this Navy postgraduate school educational experience and opportunity. The ability to do classified research on specific limitation back then involving anti-submarine warfare operations, including experience tours to visit and work with uh, Newark, the Navy underwater Warfare Center for two weeks off campus, allowing me to expand my network of naval officers, foreign military officers, and research professors, allowing me to grow significantly in my approach to critical thinking and problem solving. It's also where I had my first exposure and opportunity to join the National Naval Officers Association, NNOA. You see, back when I graduated, we were also just starting to use things like personal laptops and modems in a big way. So my exposure to technology gave me the foundation for the future. Who would have known back then that I would be leading cyber forces as the commander of the US Strategic Command when cyber forces were assigned to them back then? So I know today's students are now getting those similar foundations in subjects like artificial intelligence, machine learning, climate, and what have you, as they will similarly use what they learn here in their careers. Finally, I have many, many fond memories here of having quality time with my family while stationed here. I came here after two demanding uh, operational back-to-back -back tours and uh, I can remember my late spouse looking at a Monterey Navy postgraduate school brochure. She said, hey, I'm going there with or without this. <laughs> Thanks for God, the detailers made the right decision. But anyway, she was finally able to work a job in the community, which she so enjoyed. And we as a family were able to make many trips throughout California during the breaks that were afforded to. I would say this was the best work life, quality of life tour I had in the Navy and helped, and helped really by that ability to be able to stay connected to the campus electronically through that advancement. You know, 1200 baht we thought was moving fast <laughs> in the days of laptops and modems that are all dinosaurs, of course, to advance the technology. So for the students that may be listening to this today, my advice to you is to not only learn everything you can while you're here, but maximize your experience as I was able to do. For you don't know what you will do in the future. You do not know what we will need from you as a nation, as a military force, as a Navy, as we respond to threats and the uncertainty of the future. Follow my mom's advice to do all you can while you can. So, 
I am honored and privileged to receive this covenant of recognition. But as my dad would say, don't let any of that go to your head. And I so agree with him. I know that receiving this Hall of Fame recognition is truly a result of the outstanding men and women I've had the pleasure of serving with over the years, as well as a loving, flexible, and understanding family that tolerated so many moves, so many absences, and gave me the love and support over the years. This recognition is all about them, including my parents, Jesse and Ella, sibling, Bonnie and Yvette, and the late wife, Miss Bonnie, my three children, Elizabeth, Thomas, and Joseph, my daughter-in-law, Shalice, and my three wonderful grandchildren, TJ, Daniel, and Timmy. I tell you, at age five, seven, and nine, they're full of energy, but just a blessing to be called grandpa, I can say, at my age. As well as there are so many aunts, uncles, grandparents, etc., that uh, led the way for me. And now, as well as my dear lady friend, Miss Pat, who tolerates all of my uh, sea stories and what have you. She was a cavalry officer in the Army, and she so wanted to come uh, to the Naval Postgraduate School during her career. So uh, seeing that thirst that she didn't get to have, uh, I am thankful to be here. I will wrap up with the fact that this institution, the Naval Postgraduate School, must continue to be supported. In my opinion, it is so valuable to our national security and, of course, to our democracy. Just look at our world today and the threats associated with it. I pray that it will be supported and that it will be able to grow in its capabilities as we need to improve facilities, etc., to support our abilities to deal not just with the challenges of today, but those of tomorrow. Again, thank you all.